everyone, welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val, if you are just tuning in, and I am with my new best buddy, Tomas. Yeah. How are you that today? Must be, uh, Tomas, I'm doing great. Tomas. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, for those who don't know, we just had a session, an hour-long session, and mm -hmm. we're continue uh, to this segment. So yeah. thank you so much for moderating this. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. As, as you said, we've been having an absolute blast. Um, and today we're going to do a lot of like storytelling visually and things, but I'd love to pass things over to you to kind of let you explain what your plan is for the for today because we were gushing about it earlier yep. and I'm pretty excited. So so um, tell us a little bit about you and, and what will you have planned for today. So there is no plan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which no. is the best plan. Which, which is, is the, the best, best plan. plan. I often improvise and mm -hmm. we as artists, we, we sort of are often asked to improvise mm -hmm. and this is where our artistry shines because mm -hmm. if you prepare something, you sort of tone it down. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my personal opinion. So what we're going to do today and who, uh, who am I? Um, and, <laughs> um, He's my, amazing, and he's my new favorite person. <laughs> um, I, I work at Adobe for the last almost two years as a creative technologist. I look into new technologies that we can bring to artists like myself and, and Voodoo Val, of course, to make our life easier, better, um, more streamlined, mm -hmm. so we can go home at 5 or 6 p.m. instead of at 10 p.m., mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. So that's my personal goal. I, I truly believe in this in this mission that I sort of self-appointed uh, myself to. Um, so I look into technologies here, but my background is in creative, in storytelling and in movie posters to be specific, creating campaigns for films, video games, and shows. I've spent a few years at Netflix literally doing uh, that. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to talk today about something is that we see use of Firefly that we, we call developed here, we developed here, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't see the use for this uh, outside, and I wanted to just hint at it. Uh, mm -hmm. So it may become a great tool for folks who never considered this uh, as a tool mm -hmm. in, in their presentations, mm -hmm. right? Uh, throughout my life, uh, I've seen a lot of presentations. Some of them were haha -ha funny, some of them were ter terribly boring mm -hmm. and counterproductive. And if anything, if this is, yes, one tool to tell the story, second, if it helps you to convey your perspective, your point, your, your message to audiences, I'll be super happy if our tool helps you with that. Mm -hmm. Instead of white background or standard stock imagery, if you can create uh, amazing uh, storytelling elements, uh, that will be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I, this is my sort of goal to help you with that. Uh, we can start slowly going into the Tomasz's theory of presentation, uh, uh, and then uh, please do ask any questions you may have. Mm -hmm. Val is, you know, uh, sitting on a chat here, mm -hmm. looking at it closely, and removing uh, my old friends from the, from this chat. Uh, no, actually, everybody's <laughs> welcome. Come in, say yes, hi. Yes, yes. We have actually have a lot of really familiar faces in the chat because we've got Stony from oh, just yeah, before. Hey. Lisa Carney uh, is in the chat, Lisa. which is awesome. The artisan, welcome in and Andrew uh, thank you so much for joining us we also have Sam Peterson holding down the chat for us thank you so thank much you. to our moderator um, Sam and then we have Anthony and Christian and Alessandra Robert all of our friends in the chat so hello everyone hey, um, and if you're new to Adobe live let us know where you're tuning in from and say hello yeah please do ask questions anytime this is not rehearsed um, <laughs> Val you as well ask questions at, at, at any point. I, I can start maybe with, before we go to, to the Firefly and all of this, I want you to know why uh, this tool may help you and mm -hmm. how you present. You may have a completely different style of presentation, of course. I'm just presenting this from my perspective and, and sort of summarizing a few years of observation uh, with the presentations, mm -hmm. right? So how do we, generally, how do we structure some sort of good storytelling and effective presentation? I've heard this before, and this is what you're seeing on the screen. I'm going to read it for those who can't read it uh, here. Uh, who, what, why, and how. Uh, this is general structure. I've heard this structure uh, before, but without who at the beginning. So mm -hmm. do what, why, and how, and you get to the point and, you know, keep the interest going. I introduced who because I've noticed over, over time that folks have an easier way of understanding the presentation when they know who is it coming from. Mm. So if you mm. are a, appearing to the audience as an expert in certain um, areas that you're presenting this for, the easier they will have uh, the digesting of this presentation uh, uh, go you know smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, because I feel like folks often connect what you say with 
who's this guy? Why is he telling me this? Mm -hmm. Does he have authority? Is he is he uh, shady a little bit with his assumptions or not? Mm -hmm. But when you establish this, and this is the who in this, when you establish this at the beginning, I'm an expert in A, B, and C, and I've been doing this for X thousands of years. Uh, that sort of this part is um, it settles with, with viewers. They don't have to think about it. They can focus on your presentation. Mm -hmm. Try it. Let me know how it goes over time. Uh, if you find it helpful, please do let me know. If not, do let me know as well. Uh, so I always start with who. Who am I? Who is this? Uh, uh, who is this person that is presenting? Or is it a group? Or is it a panel? Eventually, introdu introduction of the panel in a visual way. Just few uh, one sentence, no more than that. I'm a mm -hmm. man of few words. I can talk for hours, but writing it's not my thing, um, and that's why probably I use uh, the visual language. And before we go to this, we been talking before. Why do I use storytelling? Why do I use oh, images? Yes. And, yes. and I, I thought that this may be worth mentioning. For years, when I first came to, to the States, I did not speak English uh, uh, at all. And visual assets were my language. This is how I spoke to my clients. This is how I was um, uh, connecting with folks that were approving or disapproving what I uh, have done. And this became my second nature. So I feel like fish in the water with this. I understand that this may be hard for some. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that this is not an easy uh, uh, task to tell the story nice and have people engaged and intrigued and react to it. Mm -hmm. I totally get it. So hopefully this will give you some hints how to do it, how to help yourself. And actually this tool that we're about to use, Firefly, will give you the power to illustrate what you couldn't before. Mm -hmm. You had great ideas. You have something interesting to say, but you never had friends that do it for you for free, most likely, right? <laughs> uh, or never had a skill to illustrate. Now mm -hmm. you have it, right? Mm -hmm. So go and use it. I highly encourage you. The uh, the words that you will be using, you can use for generation of the artwork, and it's the same words, literally mm -hmm. English, and now in a hundred languages in, yeah. in Firefly, yeah. you yeah. can use it. So I'm happily uh, enjoying my Polish language in Firefly. <laughs> nice. I can create all sorts of cats in Firefly, right? Um, <laughs> So let's 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 go with this. Um, let's start with who, then uh, go to section what. Wh what are you presenting? What is the problem that you're trying to walk us through and and ask us for opinion or um, ask for our understanding or or direction? Right. Mm -hmm. So this is what. Uh, why? Explain to us why you're doing this. What's the purpose? Are you are you trying to improve something or are you trying to highlight something or uh, point our attention to? Mm -hmm. Just give us like clear statement. I want you to give me money, <laughs> mm -hmm. or pay attention to that, mm -hmm. or prioritize this or that, right? Yeah. Uh, and then at the end, end with how, and of course, thank you or something like this, right? Mm -hmm. But and how? This is my solution to this problem, and always be open to for this problem to be modified. It, it rarely the, the 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 how is at the beginning as it is at the end. It transforms, so be be accustomed to it. But mm -hmm. presentation in general has this structure. Um, what I'm showing here on this sort of diagram here, I, I made it for, for my team a year ago because we were talking about presenting presentations for presentation's sake. Mm -hmm. And what it, it, it sort of shows the, the emotional state of, of the viewer, of the somebody who you're presenting this to, right? Mm -hmm. From left to right, you see uh, time and versus emotional state. Like, hey, I'm intrigued, I'm not intrigued, I'm not interested, I'm not interested, right? So when you go from point to point in your presentations, these may vary. So your point as a presentation uh, uh, master here is to keep this high uh, level of interest, right? You mm -hmm. don't want to lose folks because that's kind of why you came mm -hmm. here to present, right? To present interest and get the engagement. So uh, usually within the presentation, it's something like this, the wave of, of, of emotions. Uh, some people get bored e earlier, later, it depends, right? But look at the end. The end is, it's called extras here. I'm sorry, this is like, we're like, <laughs> okay, at the end there is extras, trust me. Uh, the reason why, oh yeah, there we awesome, go. thank you so much. So the reason why I mentioned extras is it's at this uh, sort of semi-lethargic end of presentation when everybody's just counting their minutes to leave, mm -hmm. I often present something interesting, something to spike interest again, something mm -hmm. to make them reignite again, open their eyes or smile or something like this, or just inspire them, mm -hmm. or ask questions. This is my time to ask mm -hmm. questions so folks are not leaving just with answers, right? Yeah, they yeah. ask questions. They and I have, evoke thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. When, when, when you're thinking, you're engaging, if I don't feed you that, that's sort of you're detaching yourself. You mm -hmm. start to go on your phone, be like, mm -hmm. I wonder what my wife is saying, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. I have to go. Jerry just called. And mm -hmm. you know, stuff like this. And you're 
your job is to prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. No phones, right? Mm -hmm. So I have two more slides. There, there, here is my general strategy. You may laugh at this, and you're free to do so. Please, please do. This was uh, presented to my team as a in a laughable manner. Uh, so that's how I see it. So uh, again, uh, uh, something that I that hate to do, which is graphs, but I did it anyways. And you see time um, on one axis and interest on on the on the on the other, right? Mm -hmm. So when you start presentation, you generally go into this fascination mode. Hi, Stephen. Oh, wow. Hi, Jessica. Okay. Hi, Val. Yeah. Let me present it to you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be great. Everybody's excited, and then it's like slowly after a few minutes, everything <laughs> poops. And then <laughs> at the end, we have already <laughs> this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you see the emoji there. So. You, as a presenter, you have to manage this. The mm -hmm. stories will give you this uh, platform to keep it interesting. Even if your text, your message is weak, the story will keep it interesting. The images will keep it, keep them engaged and look at least towards you and hopefully mm -hmm. engage visually or, or in the spoken word uh, mm -hmm. with you. So you can't do those ZZs here and cigarette pauses and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Instead, this is your role to create interesting elements within every few minutes of the presentation. Have a joke, yeah. have an interesting slide, mm -hmm. uh, have some Something provocative there. I'm not saying like be radical with that. No, no that's mm -hmm. not what I meant. But literally but something entertaining. That, yeah, you know, exactly. entertain people, and that's something that like you you you're really inspiring me here Aww, to just like I know you've got like this funny graph with the emojis <laughs> and stuff, but really that speaks to me mm -hmm. there, and I love just that you have this in this presentation <laughs> cool. because I understand it just with like looking visually there. It's um, it's a storytelling. Too. Yeah, 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 it absolutely, mm -hmm. and it can be really hard to keep people engaged, especially yes. if you're presenting data in a yeah. presentation. It can be very difficult. Yes. <laughs> yes, so I do understand places of graphs within the presentations, and there is a place for statistics. Of course, it's, it's there. But in between, there is a place for to keep it interesting and I actually tell the true story to folks that are observing it. They, they mostly don't know your background. They, they don't know how emotionally are you are you involved in this project, and most likely this is product of your of your life and dream. And just presenting this on white sometimes it it, it hurts you more than 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 mm -hmm. something that it it's filled with with the graphics. Yeah. I have one more presentation that I want to show you before I show you the actual presentation. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please do let me know. Yeah, please um, let us know in the chat if you are somebody who makes presentations a lot. Um, if you are, and if you do make presentations often, or if maybe you're gearing up for a presentation. Mm -hmm. What will you be presenting, and and what are the parts of those presentations or those communication moments um, that you maybe struggle with, mm -hmm. or that you are maybe dreading? Because I have trouble presenting particular kinds of things oh, really? sometimes. Yeah, if yeah. I'm not painting while uh -huh. I'm doing it, and I'm like, I have to say this specific thing. Yeah. I forgot everything <laughs> that I, you know, like somehow painting really helps me do that. But um, I'd love to know what everybody's kind of working on presenting because maybe we can chime in and talk mm -hmm. a little bit about how to, you know, convey those yeah. visually, yeah. those certain points. Maybe we can help some people out here. Yeah, and there's going to be part interactive part where you prepare your uh, typing fingers here mm -hmm. uh, because I may ask you for some hints and ideas and thoughts and you know uh, keywords that I may not know even as English is my second language. Yeah. Uh, uh, so please be ready. Uh, um, don't go and watch Netflix right now. Later, <laughs> maybe um, uh, leave the dog alone and, and stay, <laughs> stay with us. Uh, what I'm what I'm presenting right now it's uh, it's a, uh, my most recent presentation that I've been using um, uh, Firefly to illustrate the thoughts and ideas that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, the general idea is, again, short sentences, large enough for folks to read, uh, get to the point, as many points as you like, not only three, mm -hmm. uh, because what if you have four cool ideas, what are you going to do? Like trim the last uh, one? No. No. Uh oh, yeah. no. <laughs> so be free to do the four ideas if you like. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, I, I've seen this as an unspoken rule. Like folks of, often do three. Like there's like life is divided by three. No, mm -hmm. no, that's, that's it's not. crap. No. Yeah. So, I'm introducing myself. You will see Lorem Ipsum. I don't want to do an actual presentation here. So you will see Lorem Ipsum. Don't focus on that. Focus on interaction with uh, between the text and, and image. And also focus on the flow. Like, see how I stylized everything, even mm -hmm. though um, uh, Firefly, as beautiful too it is, it gives me dif different output, right, uh, mm -hmm. from time to time, as far as like colors, shades, forms, etc. So I did unify it, all of this, by darkness and, and, and color treatment on that. So it sort of belongs to one family, looks like one presentation, mm -hmm. even though it has a different imagery within. So yeah. I don't uh, 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 provoke 
you questioning within my storytelling. You are within the same realm, mm -hmm. like you're with the same dark movie, like let's say Blade Runner. You mm -hmm. know exactly that you're in Blade oh, Runner. Oh yeah. Right? yeah, it's very, very uh, aesthetic. Yeah, like eerie. it's got a powerful feel. Yeah. yeah, so you know that you're in it, but you're presented different scenes, right? Mm -hmm. So look at it from this perspective. And so now we'll go through a bunch of those and we'll get into creation of templates and et cetera, et cetera. Right, what you, what you can observe within this template is a place for image, of course, that's 99% of, of the screen. Mm -hmm. At the bottom, what you see this this sort of uh, weird glow that I introduce often, or I introduce some sort of um, um, device that holds it together at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, so is it your logo? I have I have a few of those prepared where you're branding yourself. You can mm -hmm. put your logo in there or Adobe's logo for that for that sake. Or maybe some um, you know consistent uh, phrase that has to be there, uh, copyright uh, or uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a place for that and mm -hmm. it's 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 different. But throughout the slides you see how I try to convey the story. Uh, mm -hmm. This particular presentation was about the ego and and innovation and how ego stands in 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 uh, in a clash with innovation often how we often assume certain things so you will probably get the vibe of that. Mm -hmm. And let me go through through all those slides. Uh, as you see between this and this certain elements stay the same. So mm -hmm. I don't create friction within your eye. You are staying within within the type and you know that it always appears in the center at the same line, at the same height, and you know that the bottom glow will always be there. By the second, third slide, you figure this out and your mind is done with uh, uh, thinking about that. Mm -hmm. You can you can go into processing those images. Yeah. I often don't use first image. I'm not sure how you do it, but there is a lot of tactics uh, in entertainment world. How do you present? So I often do not present my best work as first because you know that there's 20 more pages, mm -hmm. right? So everybody will pass by. If and you that's put the you. best at the beginning, then the whole rest of the presentation is underwhelming. Exactly. It never gets any better than yeah. that. You or it's work forgotten up. too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or it's forgotten. So I'm, sl I'm starting slow here. Not Nothing, nothing uh, crazy, uh, very detail oriented. I don't want folks to um, um, go with their eyes and create friction, right? I want them to focus where I want them to focus. So from the first slide, which was kind of chaotic, right? But central in a way. I'm narrowing this. Uh, you probably think that I think too much about presentation, but mm -hmm. right here I'm presentation freak. But there, there, there is reasoning behind it, and hopefully you get 10% of it or 20, and it will help you to present. Mm -hmm. So I'm narrowing the focus. I want you to focus in the center. You see how I went through wide to center, mm -hmm. and this is where you should look like. Yeah. Uh, lo look at. They don't know it. Nobody knows about it. I know that they will look in the center to search for details, right? Mm -hmm. And I go from slide to slide. Now I have a center character in the center. Again, nice. you look in the center as an anchor, and you have some sort of uh, after introduction who I am and what I do. I tend to start with a quote that sort of summarizes what I'm trying to say, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, again, this helps me to. Um, heard the crowd and put this in specific mindset. So they won't think about anything else behind. If I explain this quote and what I mean by, hopefully the thinking is narrowed to this field, to mm -hmm. this uh, problem, to this, to this uh, exotic to most uh, 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 topic that I'm going to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. So my goal is to introduce myself, narrow it down, and have them focused, right? Once I have the crowd focused, I can go wild. But yet again, look how oh, centralized wow. it is. So I'm telling the story about data and how blind we are to certain data, how mm -hmm. we have too much of it. Mm -hmm. And this, thank you, Firefly, for illustrating this for me. This will take me uh, no quite a bit of time to get this on my own. Mm -hmm. And yet it will be in a different style. I wanted this specific style and mm -hmm. I worked on, on Firefly to get this exactly illustrative. So again, we won't focus too much or my audience won't focus too much on the physical details like photographic, photorealistic details, right? Mm -hmm. They know that I operate in abstract. By this light, they know that this is illustration and this is not real life. So mm -hmm. there won't be questions like, why is he standing so high? Uh, <laughs> this, this, this must be really windy, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm trying to avoid that. And I keep going into 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 metaphors and illustrate that, hopefully keeping people actually wanting to look at my images. And at that time, I, with my voice, I convey the story, mm -hmm. more story to them. So the channel is open in my mind, how they look at it, how they uh, are engaged, hopefully, with this. And I feed uh, uh, the, the spoken word 
to them. Mm -hmm. uh, often here and there, what I'm using, and I'm using Firefly for that, it's, it's, it's tremendous, uh, how I can use some sort of contrast. Uh, I, <laughs> I use that as, as, a, as an illustration of uh, my old hometown, for example, mm -hmm. right? So we started laughing. Why do we laugh during presentation, right? Why do I do this? I, use, I do this to, to check on the audience if they're uh, processing. Mm -hmm. So prepare mm -hmm. slides from time to time. Create something funny, something clashy, something, something weird and awkward that you can describe in a funny way yeah. to see if the audience is uh, still with you or they're thinking about their 401k, right? Mm -hmm. So prepare for assets like this. Don't always focus on telling the story of the product that you're presenting, right? Do something that it's out there to get the engagement again and sort of awake the audience again. They're like, oh my God, I'm waiting. I Reconnect wonder, I wonder what the, he's yeah. going to present next. Yeah. What, where this is going? Like how, what? Um, uh, and I'm hoping not to lose them, right? So let's go through a few more slides and then I we'll start, cr one. start creating. So this was actually illustration of of a topic that was about creativity, that mm -hmm. is non-linear. Mm -hmm. So literally, I, my hope was that I can create this light bulb that is associated mentally uh, with the creativity, right? The, the person with the light bulb on top of their head. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to illustrate that from one light bulb, I can get like seven different light bulbs. Mm -hmm. And it's never the same light bulb. So I hope the audience got it, uh, mm -hmm. as I assumed that they uh, associate creativity with the light bulb uh, as I do, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's a lot of assumption, a lot of actually uh, uh, probing uh, went into it. What I should illustrate this with? So mm -hmm. it took me way longer than the presentation to create the backgrounds, just so you know. Mm -hmm. Don't feel discouraged. This is Firefly and you can get anything. So if I wanted to, bunch of uh, uh, light bulbs connected with the wires, mm -hmm. I can get it. And yeah. that's the beauty of it, right? Um, you can illustrate it. You you have mm -hmm. this amazing talent, then you can illustrate it. I probably won't, uh, or it will take me way too much time. But this tool helps me yeah, with that. Yeah, it can uh, help both of us in very yeah, different ways. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, also, we do have some uh, some some questions that have uh -oh. come in and people sharing a little bit about um, themselves with you. Um, we have, for example, Aless Alessandra saying, "This is awesome. English is my third language," and so mm -hmm. she had a very similar experience to you um, when coming. And um, uh, Misty is saying that she does present often. She presents to boards of directors all the time. Mm -hmm. And I also teach a class, so I present to my students all the time. Um, and then we have, uh, like, Christian really chiming in with some pretty great points about, like, increase the spectator's expectation and keep it centered, which I think is uh, great, talking about engaging the audience mm -hmm. and everything. And we've got some folks over on um, our YouTube chat. Uh, right. For example, we've got Andrew in there. Um, and Andrew Andrew was actually asking if we could go through some of the images, and we are full into the images now. So yes. there you go, Andrew. Um, but I think um, uh, Droopy was saying that they present highly technical cybersecurity mm -hmm, information mm -hmm. um, and have found um, using tools such as this has been really, really helpful. And that sounds like really dense data, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. when it comes to presenting and stuff that could really benefit from some of this because um, I, you know, I'm making paintings constantly, yeah. so I always have some of my own work to like throw in there. Reuse but, it, you know, you, if, you're, if you're, it. yeah, if you're not yeah. an illustrator or you, um, don't have access to the kind of images that you want, this does end up being coming Ooh, yeah, I'll show, an I'll amazing keep, keep tool showing. where you can do that. Yeah. You, you know, for, for us, it's somewhat easy to create those presentations, but mm -hmm. with that, become easier for folks who cannot. And this mm -hmm. is this is amazing. Like the, the data, actually, we are so probably tired of visualizing data in a certain mm -hmm. ways as a silo, as a this cylinder, as a like, uh -huh. you know, bunch of dots. What if, yeah, yeah. What if you visualize data? You Of course, you have narrative in the center or somewhere within within the slide, mm -hmm. and you illustrate it in a completely different way. What if you present data as a stacked cheese, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and trigger the interest in the audience. And they're like, oh, I've seen every, <gasps> I did not see everything, right? <laughs> so you're looking for the for this moment of this engagement and true like interest of, uh, from them. So please, use it as cinematographers use angles, camera angles, or rhythm within the frame, or, or you know, uh, perspective. Let's use it the same way. Uh, read a like, quick blog about cinematographers, how they frame certain elements, right? Mm -hmm. You see most of my stuff is cropped, like suggests that it's, it's bigger than the slides, so it gives you this perspective of like, this is big. I'm not containing this by any mm -hmm. means, right? There is a world outside of it, and you're looking through the keyhole mm -hmm. to it, right? So I'm giving you this passage uh, uh, to that. So please do use it this way. 
way. Um, elements of cinematography are awesome. Illustration, you're mm -hmm. blessed with the talent that you see the light color and, and you know what which colors are affecting how they're affecting us. If, mm -hmm. if it's yellow, it's warm, uh, you feel great. If it's blue, you're sort of uh, cold and, and mm -hmm. comfy a little bit, right? So you know how to do this. For folks that don't know, this hopefully will help you, unless you you type it and make it really blue. Yeah, that's that's your fault. Then, right? <laughs> uh, let me go through more a few more slides, and we'll go into the nuts and bolts of, of this. If if you guys are not tired of me showing the images right now, let us know in the chat. This is um, uh, this was actually uh, show a collaboration between people. Do I care about these faces? No, I just wanted to convey how colorful and happy the crowd is, and mm -hmm. I I do believe I got it from there. Uh, the fight was to get the text letterable on that, but that's a separate story. We'll talk about it in a second. Second, This is what I was uh, uh, describing uh, different uh, uh, taste clusters with, within people. Some people like this chocolate, some people like that chocolate, Ooh. right? Some people like this chocolate, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So with Firefly, you can illustrate that and, and you can hit the target that you're sort of aiming at, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is how I was describing that I used to design movie posters. Are they movie posters? Hell no, but <laughs> at least it gives you the idea of the artsy-fartsy uh, space that I was in. Yeah, and yeah. that was, you definitely know that it was not technical, not sterile, I didn't do biotech. Mm -hmm. You know exactly that I'm like, oh, this weird artist that does stuff there, right? The um, chaos of creation. Yeah, chaos of creation. And then there was <laughs> anger. I wanted to re reflect the anger. And I, I found out those few guys like screaming there like crazy, right? <laughs> I, I wanted to convey the story that uh, actually we are, as a designers here in this case, for this particular presentation, that we're at the tip of the mountain uh, uh, of, of a producers and illustrators and something else. And this is how I illustrate the rest of it, right? Mm -hmm. So you are, I'm telling you the story and keeping your eye uh, uh, to oh, it. I so, love that. So yeah. this is this is the different uh, uh, slide. There is mm -hmm. the rest of the people, right? Uh, this is the uh, sort of illustration of the uh, snowball effect. So I designed it snowball, right? You ask Firefly, hey, do do a few shots of uh, snowballing effect, and you get it. And then you use one that is slightly offset, so you have a place in the center to mm -hmm. tell the story, right? Do you see what I'm talking about? How how that works? This is how I describe myself. Literally, I know nothing. I am uh, in a bubble from the outside. I have to test everything, right? Mm -hmm. This is my approach to everything. Mm -hmm. I may have my presumptions, but I just want to control and check if I'm assuming correctly with you. And for that, I would love to test. And for the testing, it was just one word, test here. Uh, I wanted to create lab when people are testing. So you associate this in your mind with the testing, right? Mm -hmm. It's completely functional lab. Nobody works like that, right? Mm -hmm. But in your mind, I believe this is how lab works. Yeah, and 100%. Uh, yeah. The freedom that you, you get from, from, from being paperless, mm -hmm. uh, for, for example. Let's, let's illustrate. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> So I wanted to illustrate this as well, right? So I got this. Uh, is it accurate? No, but let it let it go. This is mm -hmm. what I wanted to illustrate. This is how my brain works, right? Like a bunch of balloons that fly all over and they touch sometimes each other. Mm -hmm. And you get the idea. Hopefully with that, you get the idea. I don't have to explain it for seven minutes, right? Mm -hmm. I break things. When I work, I break things, right? I, uh, I often, I don't know, scream and go ag against the current. And mm -hmm. that's um, not well received, but I have to do this to discover something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I connect the dots, for example, oh. or I thank you for the for your time, right? Mm -hmm. And I illustrated, this is humorous part, humorous slide, when I see you all snoring there and sitting like, okay, this was, this was not, not, not <laughs> interesting. And I did it for the reason that I mentioned before, to create this haha -ha moment. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, right? And uh, this is how you create those presentations. And now let's, let's go, and uh, if there are not any questions, let's go into Photoshop and start crying. Yeah, let's go for it. I'm going to go through, and uh, like we had a lot of uh, some folks in the chat saying, ah, let it go. <laughs> yep. um, uh, Andrew's saying, um, so uh, all these visual expressive images were made by you in Firefly? Yes, yes, uh, correct. Awesome. And then Andrew also says, with the chocolates, um, you can say it's like the different tastes people express when it comes to imagery and generating graphics. And I I agree because you showed those and it was like three different personalities mm -hmm. of like who would chocolate. approach the chocolate. And I, that second image, uh, the chocolate looked go. so magic. <laughs> it looked like an artifact and I was like, I'd eat that chocolate. Yeah, yeah. I would eat that chocolate. I'll, that's I'll, the I'll, one for I'll, me. I'll, I'll have two. <laughs> and that's that's a test for the audience as well. Mm -hmm. So I was probing which which audience I'm having. So mm -hmm. if you were to react to this chocolate, be like, ah, 
Yeah. I know exactly who's oh. there. So that's why I would rather present to the live audience where you can read them, not yes. like like this here. And the, part of the presentation is reading the room too, mm -hmm. right? If people are disengaging, they're scratching, they're doing something weird, they're look, checking on their phone, scratching their toes, mm -hmm. uh, that's no bueno and you have to, uh, no, you, you have to, um, get to the second gear to be yeah. on, to be honest with your storytelling skills right uh, if I don't see I'm a, I assume a lot it's easy for me to assume because I'm, I'm old <laughs> and I've seen this all uh, so that's easy for me I hope somebody's smiling there I, I just hope so mm -hmm. um, uh, let's go to to Firefly any other questions please do ask really looking forward um, yeah Firefly okay let's do Firefly yes so what I have here, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go to any presentation uh, software that's up. That's your choice if you're using, you know, anything that's available on the market. I'm gonna use this old, good old tool, Photoshop, to create a template, right? Mm -hmm. And how Tomas is creating template is is pretty simple. I go create a, 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 a slide uh, that has uh, dimensions of, let's say, 1920. Let's go to pixels. Uh, let's say 1920 by 1080. That's like a standard presentation. Mm -hmm. Nothing extra as far as resolution or, or um, uh, you know, uh, 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 what's the space I'm looking for? Uh, color model. Nothing yeah. like that. Nothing like that. No, 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 no specific um, um, uh, elements there. So I create this. I choose gray background so I can see. I often choose like a really, really. Um, uh, drastic colors for the background and it's not mm -hmm. to wake me up but every time i place the slide i want to see if i'm not missing something mm -hmm. if it's touching the edge so i often use this if that's any hint um uh, shift shift delete i'm going to use 50 percent gray to fill the background command zero to make it 100 uh, percent here um yes. so th these are my tricks for setting up the background it's way colorful or gray uh, to not hurt my eyes too much. And I'm starting with the uh, placement of my text. For that For that particular presentation, I'm setting up this uh, uh, text that it, I believe is large enough for folks to read it. And I'm sort of uh, aligning it uh, to the center or slightly above center. Why above center? It's like it's so easy to, you know, shift click and align it to the, to the center. Yeah, mathematically, it's in the center. Mm -hmm. But visually, uh, it should be slightly above the center, uh, so the image won't flip it visually a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I often go a little bit higher, uh, like two, three clicks. So you have this body, heavier body of, of art, right below the type, so it sits there. Literally, it visually hangs there, right? When you create something that is in the center, it's so easy visually to tilt it in a way, mm -hmm. and you will see this sometimes with the folks at the, um, at the presentation that do this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do that yeah. Um, with, with one bright uh, light, let's say sun, uh, mm -hmm. off to the right, and they'll do this. So that's, uh, in my opinion, not good because then they're detaching from from your beautiful words that mm -hmm. you're saying, right? So I lift it up and I leave, um, uh, for example, um, smaller text for Command T. I'm using smaller text for, let's say, some additional uh, explanation copy, mm -hmm. some some you know like extra subtitle points, or subtitle or something, something like yeah. something that I want to not necessarily mention, but I want this to be there for those curious to read if they yeah. want to, right? They've done the image, they hear me talking, blah, 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 but they're like, okay, Thomas, shut up. Let me read what you said there. Ah, that's somewhat interesting, gotcha, right? Gotcha. So I'm yeah. leaving this text there for, the, for that particular reason. I'm gonna remove it. And there are two ways to go about it. Are you presenting white text on a colorful background mm -hmm. or you're presenting black text or dark text? You need this sort of uh, contrast for people to read it, of course, right? It's pointless if you work two weeks on the presentation and nobody can read it, right? Mm -hmm. So you choose white text or dark text of any color, and then, but then you you're most likely will have to go with the brighter background. So mm -hmm. think about that, which way you want to go. This is my already well-established template that I use uh, bright text, uh, white or yellowish or some sort of, I sample the colors often from this to make it cohesive as a one thing. And what I do, I often create some sort of depth, darkness behind this text, mm -hmm. so it stands mm -hmm. out from, from the background. How do I do this? I know, I know images, we're, we're, we're getting there. So I often go within, within Photoshop any other or any other tools. I go to curves, for example. And when I have a curves here, I hope you're, you're, you're seeing this. This is like mm -hmm. uh, a, a minutia thing. You can, of course, you can do drop shadow and stuff, but often it looks kind of dirty mm -hmm. a little bit. And then when when goes through a compression, like a JPEG or something, it starts to look weird. Mm -hmm. uh, so I often do this. I often make it darker. So I drag the brightest point on this and I make it the heck of a dark, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this almost black, right? This sort of pointless because I won't see the image, but then 
I reverse the selection. I uh, press Command I. I reverse the selection, so nothing is selected. And with really large brush or gradient, maybe. So I choose the gradient and I unmask it in like 10, 20 percent, and I do a few few of these here. Nice. So, so you're like so oh. sort of. I know. I know that look like bubbles right now uh, and such. But I can I can work on this later to create this distinct but not super hard area that is sort of uh, stands out. So let oh, let's say this nice is this though. is my thing, right? It's it's there. I I see it clearly right now. But you'll see the purpose of this once I drag images. Mm -hmm. So my template is almost le ready. Let me save. And before I start putting images, I know I'm dragging this really well, right? Um, I want to. Consider something else. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any additional text that should go on this? My contact, for example. So if somebody mm -hmm. takes a picture in the conference, they know how to contact me. So I can put my website somewhere there on the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Or my logo that they associate me with. Or maybe some legal mambo jumbo that I want to put there. Hey, do not copy this because you don't have a rights, right? The popcorn we're selling isn't really this big. Yeah, ex ex you know? exactly. <laughs> All objects may appear closer, right? So I have a bunch of bunch of logos, for example, and I can drag any of that. I can drag my beautiful face if I wanted to. Um, um, or let's say my logo that it's on the white, and I can start messing with this. If not my beautiful face, let's say my logo. I mm -hmm. want this to be consistent. You don't want this to jump from slide to slide, mm -hmm. and of course not be that big because that would be uh, slightly ridiculous. Something small, like you take care of your brand. You put it somewhere at the bottom mm -hmm. or maybe somewhere at the top. Who cares? Uh, who knows? Uh, I, I tend to put it at the bottom because often when I create characters, that's the place at the top where their eyes are, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, so it may collide. So I'm going to literally align it here somewhere in the center and let it sit here for a moment. Later on, once I create graphics, I'll sort of figure this out, right? So it's Tomasz's branded uh, um, the presentation is here. If I wanted to put my face in there, nice. I can I can do exactly the same. I'm a very serious fella here. I want you to remember this through my whole presentation. I can put it right here, right? I don't need it. You're t probably tired of my face already, so let's don't do this to you. Let's Not go even. to <laughs> let's go to Firefly, right? And how? What what do you do? So of course you have to think about what this presentation uh, will be. Not about mm -hmm. monsters here, right? But let let's say hypothetically if it's a, if it's a monster. So you sort of when you do present presentation, you sort of write down the bullet points that you want to hit. Mm -hmm. And think right below those points, think the story that you would like to tell. Mm -hmm. If you talk about data, let's say, I would love to show them different kind of data and how it connects, right? So do I, uh, do I express the server as a, as a monster? I don't know. Uh, it's totally up to you. But try to verbalize it. Try to tell the story first to the computer, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're telling like stories to ourselves when we illustrate. Like yes. this is going to be when you illustrate your your uh, artifacts. You're like this is going to be used by a dark wizard that mm -hmm. does this and that, and for that he needs it. You create this outer story and maybe overthinking it, but to tell the good story, you sort of have to think this through. Because yeah. if not, people will point out the holes there, right? Like a good so you, narrative and a yeah. purpose. You purpose know. Or, the, or the techniques that may be uh, used with the wizard, right? What kind mm -hmm. of tools wizard can, can yeah. have, right? Yeah. He doesn't have a professional drill, right? So mm -hmm. most likely holes won't be perfect. A right? chisel. A chisel, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or maybe he has a magic, for, magic for, for perfect holes, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so think about the story. Try to verbalize it for yourself. Maybe write a few interesting points first before you start. And then go and experiment. Literally, this is how it looks. If you have your bullet points and you're crafting your stories, let's say I have 10 uh, slides. Mm -hmm. uh, at one, I want to do humorous. One, um, very depressing. I want them to cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and w one talking literally about the data and, mm -hmm. and such, right? Mm -hmm. So think about it, visualize it first, and then go here to Firefly that it sits there and waits for you to, to, to start doing stuff. So, so when, when we start, and I, I do do hope you are familiar with the with the UI for, for this. If not, please go ahead and play with this. It's super simple. We've made it hopefully very simple for you. Yeah. Uh, just in case, if you don't know, here are the styles, here are the colors and the lighting uh, presets that we set up for you. So you don't have to type it, which is beautiful. Um, I mean, you can, but it will be replaced by 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 a tag here. Mm -hmm. So what what I do? I start first with a with a uh, some sort of aspect ratio. I'm designing horizontally, so I don't want to spend much time on adding background. Even in Photoshop, it's super easy. I don't want to spend time. I've spent already enough mm -hmm. on storytelling. I don't want to spend a lot of time on messing with the images, right? So instead of square, I will go to something like landscape or widescreen. Even ah, let's do landscape. Or you know what? Let's do let's do widescreen. So ooh, ooh now we're talking. Okay, so we have these monsters being uh, uh, re-rendered for the widescreen. The reason why uh, I just uh, I want to also crop uh, this temporary mark for not using this uh, for. Um, for um, 
commercial use. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys have any ideas for what can I create, what the story is, the cheese was it inspiring? Should I create this cheese thing? Mm -hmm. Is there anything in the chat? Uh, what would you like me to create? Yeah, let's see. Um, I think that um, it would be really cool to you know maybe experiment. Uh, with some of the elements for the theme interpreted in a different way and to see like from your perspective how you come across those mm -hmm. um, concepts because that's one of the things that I like we were talking earlier mm -hmm. that like really draws me to a lot of the stuff that you create is like there might be some people in the chat who like me like I kind of know what I want to say but I don't know what would be the most impactful sort of concept mm -hmm. and so maybe we can in this step we yeah. can kind of go over like how do you concept that? And how do you make that decision on like when you want to show that, you know, there's like freedom and mm -hmm. everything you were using, that person jumping in the air, but then you also had like the balloons running. Mm -hmm. And I would never personally, <laughs> I would never think balloons, but like it said it so perfectly. So that's the part of this that I'm super excited for. Um, and it looks like- um, Let's find a topic got, and illustrate this. Yeah, like JM is saying, um, talking about formulas for nice storytelling because you can create nice sets for the story based on similar styles, mm -hmm. um, AKA projects. Um, uh, Andrew is loving the monsters. Um, <laughs> Andrew's definitely loving the monsters, but give us some suggestions, folks, if you have any ideas um, for what we could go for. And then um, maybe in the meantime, we just kind of go through because yeah. there is a slight delay yeah. oh, for, okay. Okay. For, um, okay. for people seeing. So it takes a little bit of time for our questions to mm -hmm. get to them. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's say we start with, the, you guys are thinking about the topic, let's say start with the, how I would like this to appear. Is it, is it, is it by itself as a singular object on the mm -hmm. scene or should be surrounded by something, right? I often like uh, the surrounding elements to be there, sort of give you the, the, the perspective where it takes place or when it takes place. So I often say, like, let's say uh, we're on, um, uh, let's say forest um, um, and, 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 image of a uh, ancient forest um, uh, with a central spot um, uh, uh, during the day, during the day okay. uh, with, let's say, who can be there? Uh, maybe a, a kid uh, holding uh, uh, a kite? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for, yeah. Uh, with, uh, day, uh, with a kid flying uh, kite. I hope I did not uh, make any mistakes. And let's let's see. Let's start. Good to me. Like, and 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 what I'm trying to illustrate it's a it's a it's a person that it's lost uh, uh, that is looking for help, and a kite hopefully bring help. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I'm trying to illustrate. If there are any other ideas, please please do do, do oh. tell me. Okay, so we're starting to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, also, the reason why I, why I selected this is it's it's a distance between a kite and a person. So I mm -hmm. was kind of sneaky in this. So nothing will be standing in between uh, the kite and the person and my type in between. That is such a good point. And I feel like we really need to draw attention to that. So you were not just saying, like, this is what I want, and then you're going to put it in and look at it. Like, you thought about, well, if it's somebody flying a kite, there's going to be <laughs> something up here and something here and probably distance in the center specifically for how I intend to present yes. text information. And I think that's so clever. And I, I wouldn't <laughs> have thought to do that either, but that is such a good tip. So everybody take notes on that. I'm going to be doing that. <laughs> do it. That's, that, you know, that comes with experience. But mm -hmm. also like when we talked about the monster that I had there, it, as beautiful it, it was, the, the, the main problem with this was his jaw, right? Mm -hmm. his, his face. Most likely I will have a type uh, uh, over his uh, over his uh, mouth, which may suggest mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't want to talk. I, I'm 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 silenced, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to convey this through my slides. Mm -hmm. Or I will have to move the dude up. That means that I'll have to put this on his crotch, which is not uh, the best yeah. idea, right? Not great. Or above mm -hmm. his hair mm -hmm. or eyes, and that sort of destroys this. Mm -hmm. Unless I can move him to the side, that's uh, also an option. But I thought about this this way, right? So we have few slides. Are there any ideas, or can we continue with this? Let's what do you, what see do you guys think? What we've got. Um, everybody's saying that they love your idea of using the central spot in the um, in in the prompt. Um, and JM uh, says that they don't have a, su a suggestion immediately. I don't believe, but um, it looks like they are also doing their own generation 
generations and then we'll um, share some prompt awesome. stuff. So let us know what sort of um, phrases you guys um, uh, would use in prompts or if you're you know generating work now um, and, and checking out Firefly and experimenting a little bit with what you can create. Um, let us know what you've made um, or give us some suggestions for yeah. words to use in our prompt. Um, yeah, I, I love I love that top uh, which one? Uh, top right? Left, top left one. Top the left? top left. Okay, yeah. we, we can go with this one. What in the meantime, what I what I did and I highly encourage you to play with the styles. Mm -hmm. To create a style that is adequate to your presentation. There, there are some more joyful presentations, there are some more serious presentations. And you will discover if you mess with with with, uh, with Firefly mm -hmm. enough, uh, you will see different options for uh, for lighting, for example. There mm -hmm. is there is golden hour lighting, which I'm, I'm thinking about using, but there is dramatic lighting or backlighting. Mm -hmm. And you may use it for a different tone of your presentation, right? This, what I'm seeing, it's very, very uh, uh, sort of warm uh, mm -hmm. uh, storytelling. But you may go into something cold, into data, but you you may present it in a cold way, or it depends on your audience and the message you're sending or yeah. the, the ask that you have, right? So I'll do, let's say I'll do golden hour, uh, add another thing. I, I created this as a digital art and as a layered paper. That will sort of make my uh, presentation stand out from any other because mm -hmm. I did not use it often. So I'm experimenting here myself. And I'm just hitting regenerate. So it should take the same um, um, asset and regenerate it and, and, uh, with slightly different uh, uh, lighting options. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we can go from from there. So we oh, have wow. something very similar, something more warmer, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping for the reception of that. Like I'm looking for wow, right? That yeah. The, <laughs> so the one that's directly behind us right now, I love that one, but it uh -huh. does look like he's waving at a dementor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this can be a di different story. This can you you can say it depends. Now the text uh, has a very specific function of narrowing your thought, right? Mm -hmm. So if you thought there was Dementor, right, and, and, and if I agree with that, yes, let's use it as a, some sort of scare for this kid, mm -hmm. I will use it in, within the copy. Is like, I would say, bad data may sneak upon you mm -hmm. at the most craziest time, right? Yeah, that's and then great. suddenly you have this uh, connection between the, what we're saying and what we're illustrating, mm -hmm. and folks hopefully will understand it, right? Mm -hmm. If you say something contradictory to the image, folks will have a friction and you're losing them, right? Yeah. If you do three in a row like that, they will probably leave or call their friends, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, look at it from this perspective. What can what the function of the text will be. If you have 85% there and you're like, oh, now I have to just mention that the data is scary mm -hmm. and may show up somewhere, you know, unaware uh, that I'm unaware of, boom, here, here is your slide, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, which one would you like to choose from? I, I do like that one that, that we one? talked about. Yeah, so okay. we could totally do that because yeah. I just thought that was let's, a really great let's point. Let's do it. So um, I'm selecting this. Um, for those who are not familiar with uh, with Firefly, this is where you get to download your, mm -hmm. your asset. And when the asset is selected, I want to mention something really important. The asset is being tagged as uh, as an AI artwork, mm -hmm. and this sort of text follows it um, all over, mm -hmm. uh, so we know we can track if it was created, uh, uh, you know, using AI tools. And it has a tags, and luckily for us, it will be saved with the whole prompt and within the name, mm -hmm. uh, which is awesome. So then you go back tomorrow, be like, ah, I can use the same copy paste, right? Nice. So I'm sort of downloading this. Content credentials are applied. I'm not sure if you saw it. It's a it's a brief moment. I agreed to that uh, mm -hmm. some time ago. And let's go to to Photoshop, right? So one I, thing I would uh -huh, like yeah. to point out as we dive, like, go ahead and dive into Photoshop, mm -hmm. but diving. something that would uh, that was definitely was very impactful for me, like seeing your process. I and I think um, someone commented on it in the chat as well. Uh, was the way that you created the shadow behind the text, and now we're going to kind of get to see that mm -hmm. um, in in uh, connection with the uh, with the image that we've selected. Um, but I absolutely love it, and I'll tell you why is because we didn't we didn't know what image you were going to end mm -hmm. up with, but we've got this like very very organic vibe happening here, and you could have put a drop shadow underneath that text yeah. in that example um, and just have like this very sharp, very harsh line underneath it or a very uniform look. But the way that you created that with the mask and adding those like bursts of shadow underneath mm -hmm. it gives it such an organic feel. Um, and I, yeah, I just love that. It almost looks like it's like, you know, it's like peeking 3D through the trees, a like, yeah, kind of oh, pulling we, out. Oh, I love we it. We can mess with this all day long, just with this one image. But 
just you know I'm not, I'm not gonna make the whole presentation here but what I, what I did I just uh, dropped the, the the image here as a smart object so mm -hmm. I can stretch it mess with this a little bit uh, you know for the sake of this presentation I don't want to you know have this uh, um, uh, visible here at the bottom left but I'm going to stretch it mm -hmm. and I'm gonna stretch it to the to their maximum later on I can just do some tricks Photoshop tricks on it so I'm placing the dude here and I want to have this sort of this monster there or whatever it is mm -hmm. I want to have it here right okay. uh, maybe slightly smaller and I'm balancing this right now what, what I'm doing right now it's it's my artistic mind is sort of thinking about it what's too 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 much of a crop what's too little of the of the crop and um, like hunting for the, the best composition for the there. Good, sp good spot, maybe slightly bigger, so there is too much space above mm -hmm. this uh, Demogorgon there or whatever it is flying there. <laughs> the dude is standing <laughs> on my logo. I forgot, I, I'm going to use the, the new Photoshop for that uh, thing. Close this one. Uh, oop. Uh, We've got about five minutes left. Oh, God, just oh, God. As, okay. a, as a quick reminder. Um, and um, we should do this more often. Yeah, I think I think that um, one of my favorite things about this too is that um, we've kind of come away here um, by the end of this with um, a lot of tips for how to jump in and like create these images and create this um, this presentation. But I also feel like I understand a little bit more about the philosophy behind creating a presentation and how that communication is happening and why, like the questions you asked mm -hmm. at the beginning, that who, that why, um, and, and all of those. And I feel like I can now approach presentations with not just, you know, like this, like even more powerful method of visualization, but um, with more impactful structure and organization with a, with a purpose to them rather than just saying, here's the data. Yeah. And I hope that you watch this whole thing, you know, like now we've got it. So let's mess with this since we just have a few minutes. Uh, let's mess with the legibility of that. Mm -hmm. So I will have the, the, the gradient or maybe big brush. I can select big brush and with a 1% opacity, I can sort of go there and manipulate that. This is of course very rough. I would work on it probably a little bit longer. Uh, then spread it a little bit around mm -hmm. and maybe remove some of the stuff where to do this. I want you to focus on him, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to see this be behind the trees. Or maybe I can darken even the uh, the edges here. Like if a I wanted vignette to. of sorts. Yeah, like some sort of vignetting, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, this is raw image, right? Now mm -hmm. what, what I what I can do, and let's say, let's add the actual text. What would you suggest this would be about the data? Um, yeah, a um, bad, bad, bad data can sneak up on you when you least expect. Yeah, Right? Yeah. Okay. Kind so of a long. Kind of long, yeah, but, it, long, you, you, but it you get, gets the, it. You yeah. get the idea. We could tweak it if we so were, you know. Now I'm sort of stretching the, our adjustment, blah, blah, blah. I can duplicate it, maybe see it if, mm. it, if it's, oh, that's way too much, but let's manipulate you this a little bit. read it, but bit. a little too dark. Yeah. And then what, what I often do, I often uh, select different tools to sort of adjust it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, this thing. Sorry. Sorry, not prepared. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go to workspace and do just essentials. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Anyway, I'll do uh, adjustments, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. I'll go to um, uh, adjustments and bring, let's say, ba -ba 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 -ba, what can I bring? Color balance. Color balance. The reason why I bring color balance to shift the perception of this image. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make it even warmer than it was right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the sky is blue. But it's sort of sort of uh, uh, good uh, to feature the, the fella there. But I want to make, make it slightly warmer. So I'll pump up the, uh, the uh, yellows here mm -hmm. a little bit, maybe make it more. More into the it, red. It, oh, we might be on the other um, uh, wrong layer. Uh, it was supposed to be ah on white. Oh Jesus, sorry. That's okay. Um, so, um, um, in our last few few moments uh, or few minutes here, too, one thing that I would like to remind everybody um, is that. 
Uh, we do have, uh, you know, kind of an announcement for the In The Making podcast. If you guys are interested in hearing from uh, so many very inspiring uh, creatives, uh, Teresa Ao has been uh, uh, working on this podcast, which I find to be really, really inspiring. If you guys need something to listen to while you're working, you want to learn from creatives all over, uh, this is definitely the podcast for you. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, we are kind of at our time here, however. <laughs> um, so thank you all for joining us. It has been a blast awesome. learning Awesome. Thank you so you. much. You're, you're a great host. Thank oh, you so much. Thank this you. Is, this I, is fantastic. You are such a great <laughs> explainer of like the philosophy behind presentation and not just how this is how you make the template. So mm -hmm. I feel like I've really learned a lot from you today as far as how I will approach it in the future. Um, where can folks find you online um, if they um, want to check you out or you send you a message? check my website, opashinsky.com. That's my last name, O-P-A-S-I-N. And SKI.com. Uh, there, there are some examples of old posters. I have a question slash request. Can we show the final? Uh, can we show my final screen? Uh, because this is the slide. We are talking about slides, so here yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to do more, but you know, we are sort of short on, on, on time. But you get you get the idea. I hope you have a lot of fun creating those slides and you know having a better reception of, 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 of what you're trying to present and use this tool please mm -hmm. use this tool it's, it's it's such a blessing for for artists and not artists actually the, let's not think that this is just for artists it's mm -hmm. actually probably even not for artists right yeah folks from marketing others mm -hmm. uh, data scientists uh, use it and um, good luck have fun and Creativity I'm looking forward for to all. see yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for all yeah that's in hundred languages now. all right thank you guys so much and we will see you another time adios awesome. everybody bye <laughs>